Hello and welcome to our show, Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts about pre-diabetes. I'm Gargi Rawat. Now, the number of individuals affected by pre-diabetes is increasing rapidly across the world. The presence of pre-diabetes does not mean you have diabetes, but provides you with an option to take corrective action to reverse the condition and prevent the progression to full-blown type 2 diabetes. Uh, pre-diabetes is a serious health condition. Individuals with pre-diabetes are at high risk of developing full-blown uh, diabetes and it's associated complications so a better understanding of it can help with early detection and therefore allow earlier intervention and potentially lower the number of individuals who go into develop go on to developing type 2 diabetes getting detected with pre-diabetes provides one with a window to take corrective steps to reverse the condition uh, so to tell us more about this today we have with us eminent endocrinologists who can help you understand and manage pre-diabetes better we're joined by dr mala uh, dharmalinga a director and head BEDRC, ex senior professor in HOD, MSR Medical College, Bengaluru. Dr. Lijesh KU, consultant endocrinologist, Valuvana, the hospital Palakkad, Kerala. And Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi, consultant endocrinologist, Pragati Endocrine Clinic, a sanatorium, and Dr. Kamakshi Memorial Hospital, Chennai. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us on this very important issue and something that more people need to be aware about. Uh, Dr. Dharmalingam, I'd like to start with you. Uh, most people get diagnosed with pre-diabetes when they're undergoing a regular checkup or being diagnosed with an infection. And then they get this as a nasty surprise and frequently panic as well uh, when they think that it is diabetes. So why is this condition called pre-diabetes and, ha and how is it different uh, from full-blown diabetes? So thank you very much, Gayatri, for that question. Uh, Pre-diabetes is a stage before diabetes. If you look at the glucose, it is a continuum. So the measures that we usually look at is the fasting plasma glucose, which normal is below 99. Between 100 to 125 is pre-diabetes, and more than 126 is frank diabetes. The other parameter that we look at is the two-hour post-glucose load, that is after a glucose oral tolerance test. So this less than 140 is normal, and 140 to 199 is pre-diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance, and more than 200 is diabetes. So we know that this is a continuum. The other parameter which we use now is the HbA1c or the glycosylated hemoglobin. This normal is less than 5.6 and 5.7 to 6.4 is pre-diabetes and more than 6.5 is diabetes. So we know that this is how we classify pre-diabetes. Now what is the imp importance of this is and how is it different is it's an opportunity for prevention. So if I can diagnose someone at pre-diabetes stage and implement some lifestyle, I can possibly prevent onset of diabetes. So usually, we usually screen uh, children of parents who are diabetic or if they have any other comorbidities like blood pressure or overweight, we screen uh, our, our patients. But you should also understand India is very prone for diabetes. So it is recommended that everyone above 30 with a family history should be screened for diabetes. How is it different from diabetes? The, it has got some similarities also. That means the complications that the major complications start in the stage of pre-diabetes itself. So we are worried that patients should be controlled and reverse back to, uh, to non-diabetes and not progress to diabetes. And on the other hand, we also call it an opportunity of prevention, especially once we screen or we have gestational diabetes or polycystic ovaries, where we can actually guide them to reverse their diabetes. Do we need to panic? Not at all. I think it is a golden opportunity and we need to identify people at this stage so that we can prevent the progression of diabetes. Thank you.
All right, uh, doctor. Now uh, let's also talk about when one should go in for those tests. And doctor, Lijesh, a sedentary lifestyle is one of the major causes of pre-diabetes in most adults. Uh, but is there a specific age or group of people who should get tested for pre-diabetes at regular intervals uh, to detect uh, the condition at an earlier stage and prevent that uh, development of full-blown diabetes? Thank you so much for that question. Now. Uh, of course, a sedentary lifestyle is a major risk factor for developing pre-diabetes or diabetes mellitus. Now, uh, regarding the screening of pre-diabetes, uh, recently, uh, U.S. Preventive Task Force uh, had revised their recommendation on screening pre-diabetes. Accordingly, uh, adults aged uh, 35 to 70 years uh, with overweight or obesity should be screened for pre-diabetes. So uh, overweight in uh, Indian scenario is a BMI of uh, more than 23 kilogram per meter square. Uh, now coming to the uh, screening interval, there is no specific screening interval mentioned. However, once in three years, uh, screening is uh, reasonable. Having said that, uh, certain categories of individuals have um, high risk for developing diabetes or prediabetes like uh, uh, those individuals with a strong family history of uh, diabetes, people with uh, obesity, uh, and those uh, who have significant fat over the abdomen, then uh, women with uh, previous history of uh, gestational diabetes mellitus, then those who are born with a low birth weight of less than 2.5 kilograms, and then those individuals who are born uh, to uh, mothers of uh, gestational diabetes mellitus. So, these individuals should be screened at a younger age, as uh, Mala Ma'am told, they should be screened uh, uh, from the uh, age of at least 30 years. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Dr. Geeta Lakshmi, what is the correlation between uh, pre-diabetes and insulin resistance? If you could explain, you know, that aspect to us. Yes. I think that's a very important question because uh, insulin resistance is a main culprit uh, behind pre diabetes. So, uh, see, uh, we all are aware that uh, insulin is a hormone that is produced by our body, which takes care of our children. Um, so, uh, in, in patients who are pre diabetic or diabetic, so this insulin hormone is produced normally by our pancreas, but uh, this hormone is not able to function effectively. This could be due to a number of reasons. They may be genetically predisposed to have uh, this kind of insulin resistance, or they might be overweight. They could just be on the normal uh, weight side, but still have an excess of abdominal fat. So these factors could hamper the normal functioning of this insulin hormone. So though it is produced normally because it is not able to carry out its functions well, the cells are not responding well to this insulin, hence the blood sugars go up. So this is the beginning of the continuous process that is less free diabetes. So I think this is very important to understand because all lifestyle measures, reducing body weight, reducing abdominal fat, everything is focused on reversing and reducing this insulin resistance, thereby preventing us from becoming pre-diabetic or a diabetic. Thank you. All right. Now, Dr. Dharmalingam, does pre-diabetes always develop into type 2 diabetes? And if you could tell us more about, you know, about its reversal. Yes, I think a lot of excitement nowadays about reversal, not only of pre-diabetes, even diabetes. No, not all diabetes convert to, uh, pre-diabetes convert to diabetes, but the conversion rate is pretty high. It's about 70% over a five-year period. The ones on the higher end of the normals, which I told you, of pre-diabetes, they will convert more quickly to diabetes. But yes, it can be prevented or it can be reversed. So... We, what is the evidence that we have? Some time back, there were some prevention programs which were done called the Diabetes Prevention Program, both in India and abroad. And they found, and they categorized people into lifestyle and, they, and medications also. And what, what was interesting was when they took the pre-diabetes persons and put them on an intensive lifestyle, of diet and exercise, the reversal rate was as high as 58% compared to even tablet, which was metformin, where the reversal rate was 38%. And interestingly, this was almost uniformly found in studies done all over Europe, 
uh, Finland as well as in India, that the reversal rate was higher with an intense lifestyle. So yes, it can be reversed and there is hope for everyone and that is why screening becomes important. All right. Now, Dr. Lijesh, uh, you know, if we talk about uh, managing our health and when we have pre-diabetes, if you could tell us what is the best eating plan for somebody with this condition? Yeah. So uh, the diet plan or the so-called um, uh, medical nutrition therapy, uh, we should uh, aim at uh, maintaining uh, the nutritional status of the individual, uh, maintain the normal body weight, and delays uh, the development uh, or prevents the development into diabetes mellitus. So we can formulate the diet plan uh, based on the weight of an individual. Accordingly, an obese sedentary individual uh, can consume uh, a, a per day kilocalorie of about uh, 20 kilocalorie per kg per day. Accordingly, uh, if the individual is more active, it can give little more kilocalories per day. And now, uh, other important two aspects are one is uh, calorie control and second is portion control. Now coming to portion control, uh, uh, just imagine one full plate out of which a half portion you should uh, uh, give to uh, vegetables and salads. Another half you can equally divide into two, one containing cereals like uh, chapati and uh, rice Another portion with um, uh, proteins and fat like uh, legumes, dal, and fish, egg whites, and chicken, so on. And coming to calorie control, uh, low glycemic index food like um, uh, whole wheat grains, then uh, brown rice, oats uh, have low glycemic index, which uh, reduces the development of uh, pre-diabetes or progress into diabetes. Also, plenty of high fiber foods like uh, apple, guava, should be included in the diet. Also, you should, uh, if you have the habit of uh, alcohol consumption, you should uh, uh, moderate the alcohol consumption. Then uh, sugary juices and sodas should be avoided. And also you should consume at least 2.5 to 3 liters of water per day. So with that, you can uh, control the uh, glucose levels and prevent progression into diabetes mellitus. Thank you. All right, Dr. Geeta Lakshmi, how long does a person have to make lifestyle changes to reduce the risk of occurrence of diabetes? So, uh, actually, uh, as already been talking about, uh, diabetes is a lifestyle disease and it's continuous uh, disease. So, uh, these uh, changes uh, have to be started early and have to be continuous to make a successful uh, uh, prevention of the patient transmission diabetes to diabetes. So uh, in this, we are only concentrating on three aspects on prevention. One will be uh, reproduction, second will be uh, exercise, and the third will be dietary modifications. Uh, there's only a specific uh, cutoff for the weight reduction alone. So uh, various studies and evidence have shown that at least five to seven percentage of uh, body weight reduction can definitely uh, help in patients progressing uh, from pre-diabetes, prevent progression from pre-diabetes to diabetes. Whereas if you take uh, diet and exercise, it has to be a less process. So less of refined carbohydrates, less of processed foods, less of fat and more of proteins and uh, at least 30 minutes of exercise every day. So this becomes a healthy lifestyle process and it, it should be made a daily habitual uh, activity for any patient to prevent progressing to diabetes. All right, now, Dr. Dharma Lingam, we've spoken a lot about, you know, the diet and the foods that people uh, who have prediabetes should follow. But should people be more specific and, you know, uh, go into more detail? Should they uh, check the glycemic index of the food that they're consuming and make efforts to consume only uh, low glycemic foods? Thank you, Gayatri. That's a very interesting question. And yes, uh, people should become much more aware. I think this is a great platform to spread awareness because glycemic index is com a comparatively a new term as far as patient education is concerned. So now what is glycemic index? It's a measure. It's a measure of high, high, how high a glucose can go post a meal or a food item. So it is usually compared to sugar and it is graded between 50 to 0 to 100. So if a food item has a glycemic index of less than 50 to 55, we say it is a 
low glycemic index. And if it is 55 to 70, we say it is moderate glycemic index. And if it is more than 70, the glycemic index, we say it is high glycemic index. Uh, doctor has already mentioned what are the items. So yes, legumes and vegetables, fruits, they have very low glycemic index. Middle glycemic index or moderate glycemic index is found in maybe oatmeal or brown rice. And high glycemic index is found in rice or white bread, so which are things we should allow. Uh, we should not be allowing the patient to take and they should take only low glycemic food. Along with this, a very important parameter is glycemic load. What is this glycemic load? Glycemic load is glycemic index into multiplied into the carbohydrate in that meal. So if the glycemic load is also high, then the blood glucose is going to go high. So these are the two things that we are very concerned that patients should know and get aware. So as far as the patients now are concerned, they do know what is caloric diet, what calories they should take, and much we have talked about portions of food, how much carbs, how much protein, how much vegetable. But in the carbs, which are the carbs that they should take, which are healthy for them with low glycemic index is something that they have to know so that they can be free to consume that in slightly larger quantities. Thank you. All right, so many important uh, factors to keep in mind uh, when one talks about pre-diabetes and how to manage one's health and prevent it from uh, developing into full-blown diabetes. A lot more questions for you doctors. We'll slip into a short break now and return with more. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts, and we're talking about pre-diabetes, how you can manage this condition, how it's important to get it detected, and how uh, to prevent it from uh, becoming full-blown diabetes. Let's go across to the doctors now. And Dr. Lijesh, uh, can yoga or meditation help in the management of pre-diabetes? Yes, that's an important question. Now, before discussing about the uh, aspects of yoga, I would like to brief a little bit about the importance of exercise in individuals with uh, pre-diabetes. So, regular exercise improves the glycemic control. It helps to reduce the insulin resistance and maintain the body weight. Regular exercise also uh, helps in reducing dyslipidemia, blood pressure. It also improves the cardiac health in terms of reducing the coronary artery diseases. So what are the types of exercise an individual with uh, pre-diabetes should regularly do? They should uh, uh, follow four types of exercises actually. One is uh, resistance training to improve the muscle strength, then aerobic exercises of uh, 30 to 40 minutes uh, daily. Then you should also do flexibility exercises uh, to improve the mobility as well as maintain the muscle tone. And also you should uh, uh, do endurance exercises to improve the cardiorespiratory endurance. Now coming to yoga, uh, which is widely practiced all over India, uh, yoga has the primary advantage uh, that uh, it is very easy to learn and perform. Uh, no probes or instruments are needed and the long-term adherence uh, is uh, noted, uh, uh, is uh, seen. Now, uh, recent studies uh, have shown uh, that uh, uh, a continuous uh, practice of yoga improves the glycemic control, reduces dyslipidemia, and certain poses of yoga uh, is known to reduce the blood pressure. Also, uh, yoga reduces the overall stress of an individual, and it also provides uh, a well-being to the individual. So, performing yoga and meditations are good. Also, you should focus on uh, other types of exercises, which I mentioned also. Thank you. Right. And now, Dr. Mala, are there any extra precautions that people with prediabetes and other comorbid conditions such as hypertension and obesity should take? Yeah, thank you very much, Gargi, for that. Uh, the precaution is that we don't know the health of a person. So now we have been discussing that exercise is very good and they should do that. But 
they we also should know what is their stamina what is their cardiovascular uh, risk before we advise them to do the diet or the exercise so we need to tell them to do all of these things regularly apart from that watch if i have pre diabetes what should i be careful of, about first thing of course i'll try to prevent diabetes from coming the other thing is the continuum we call it the common soil hypothesis of insulin resistance is common through the continuum even in the stage of pre diabetes a person is prone for macrovascular complications like the heart disease or a stroke unlike microvascular complications which is that of the eyes the kidney and the gangrene which does not happen until the diabetes actually starts so in pre diabetes we are worried about their macrovascular health that is the heart and the stroke of course apart from that they are more prone for certain problems so they should get vaccinated regularly and that could prevent so many of the other problems what are the vaccines simple flu vaccine hepatitis vaccine pneumonia vaccine these are some vaccines that they have to take and what we have found is over this covid pandemic those who are well controlled we could prevent major problems in them if their sugars are controlled so this is something which is important and even patients with pre diabetes should not take it casually and should take care of their health to see that they don't get complications and prevent themselves from going into diabetes thank you all right uh Well, let's uh, go across to Dr. Geeta Lakshmi uh, as well. And uh, Dr. Geeta Lakshmi, do people with pre-diabetes get hypoglycemia episodes, and should they then be cautious about hypoglycemia episodes while exercising? Yes, uh, uh, definitely. See, pre-diabetic uh, patients do get hypoglycemic episodes. Uh, actually, uh, it's it's there are two kinds. One, it's very mild, and the other thing about it, uh, usually. uh it it comes and goes but patient never realizes it was actually hypoglycemia and patient uh, also doesn't realize many a time that this is a, a thing which can lead on to diabetes in future so any any uh, patient for that my, my matter any person healthy person who has a strong family history of diabetes and whenever they develop some episodes of giddiness sweating and they are unable to tolerate hunger and uh, they skip a meal or they delay the meal for few hours and they are not uh, able to tolerate uh, the delay of the meal uh, they should definitely go and check their blood sugars at that point and if it is less than uh, 70 mg per deciliter then they should be uh, uh, getting themselves to their uh, uh, physician diabetologist and uh, check what it's all about so many a time these kind of episodes can be a early warning sign that these patients are more prone to diabetes in future but uh, and these patients can modify their diet and lifestyle so what they can do is uh, the prior meal what they have should contain less of carbohydrates and more of proteins because proteins are a kind of meal which promotes satiety that is you feel full and it gets digested relatively slow so because of that these people will not develop any hypoglycemic episodes and also these people should be aware that they should always carry snacks but no unlike a diabetic these uh, kind of hypoglycemic episodes are never very severe enough to cause loss of consciousness or to cause a hospitalization but yes they do occur and they are an indicator that healthy lifestyle and diet modification and weight reduction should start from that day on so it can be a useful warning sign in that aspect All right, thank you for that. And uh, Dr. Lijesh, does excessive uh, stress cause pre-diabetes? And you know, these days everybody talks a lot about stress and the detrimental effect it has on the body. And is pre-diabetes also one of the effects? Yes, of course. Uh, this is a very important question, especially on the background of COVID and a uh, lot of stress around. So, uh, stress uh, can uh, produce something called as uh, allostatic load, and this allostatic load. Uh, is uh, causing um, release of uh, various uh, hormones like uh, glucocorticoids then epinephrine also it will uh, lead to impaired uh, pancreatic function in terms of uh, uh, beta cell dysfunction also uh, 
when you consume uh, uh, glucose, uh, the, there is something called incretin, which is uh, produced from the gut, and there is something called incretin response or glucose mediated insulin secretion from the pancreas. So, none of these uh, functions, uh, like uh, aspects, will function properly. And these individuals are prone to develop uh, uh, diabetes or pre diabetes. In addition, stress also can lead to insulin resistance, which uh, again can add on to uh, development of uh, pre-diabetes or to uh, diabetes mellitus. Thank you. All right. And uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Geeta Lakshmi, can uh, pre-diabetes cause uh, foot ulcers? We do know that in diabetes, full-blown diabetes, you do have these issues, but can pre-diabetes also lead to this? Yes, uh, actually, uh, almost 15% uh, of pre-diabetic patients ha can have a complication of diabetes called as diabetic neuropathy. Uh, so this is uh, a, a nerve-related uh, damage. So the nerves are getting hurt because of the uh, uh, excess blood sugars that are happening across the bloodstream. So and because of this, there can be uh, loss of uh, protective sensation in the food. And then this can lead on to foot ulcers. Though it is not uh, that common, but uh, patients who are having diabetic neuropathy or any uh, loss of sensation of food or any tingling or any numbness of food or any burning sensation of food definitely should get their blood sugars checked. Though they are not diabetic, if they are going to be pre-diabetic, then their blood sugars have to be kept under very, very strict control. So they should follow these lifestyle measures and diet and if necessary medications like metformin. Uh, on a regular basis so that the blood sugars never fluctuate to the pre-diabetic range as well. So this kind of uh, control and lifestyle measures can definitely uh, prevent this uh, neuropathy complications and the secondary uh, compli con sequelae of that, that is foot ulcers. All right. Well, thank you so much, doctors, for talking about this very important issue of pre-diabetes and how it's, you know, it's, it's important to get it checked and detected at the right time so one can take certain steps and make certain life changes uh, so as to reverse the condition. Uh, thank you all for watching at home. Goodbye.